So what exactly is reverse ETL? The first time I heard it, I thought it was a dance move. Now, I've got a prop here that uh, my kids uh, played with. This is uh, Lego bricks. Actually, they're a little bit bigger than that. They're, they're Duplos. And the way that I've configured this is to arrange the blocks, if I could imagine that they were data, in a way that is useful. Maybe a bar chart, for example, or a, a BI application that I could potentially use. That's generally how I tend to think about ETL is taking data from a transactional database and arranging it into a data warehouse that I could then point tools like Power BI or Tableau at to produce reports and analytics. So what's the reverse of this exactly? Well, it's a little bit mind blowing. It's kind of scary if we think about it for a minute. What we're doing with reverse ETL is we're taking data that's already been configured and arranged in a data warehouse for analytical purposes, and then moving it out of that data warehouse into operational apps. Oh, that's cool. Damn! Put your glasses back on. Yeah, that is kind of scary. It is a little bit mind-blowing. What's interesting is that about a year ago, a colleague of mine, Parker Stevens, posted a video on his YouTube channel called BI Elite, and he talked about using a DAX function and some scripts inside Power BI to be able to write back to a database. And again, at the time, it was mind-blowing. I would say it was so mind-blowing, it caught the attention of guys uh, in a cube, and they actually were a little bit hesitant in their video to uh, let people run wild with this. See for yourself. Parker Stevens from BI Elite has a video looking at how to do write back to SQL. He's actually doing this from a Power Query perspective. He created a function and in that function, he's actually doing an insert statement. While this is a very cool and interesting technique, I wanna throw out a big word of caution on this. Be very careful when you're doing anything like an insert or an update or delete or anything of that nature because of the simple fact that when using Power Query and doing refreshes, things of that nature, that individual query could be issued more than once and you don't really have a way to control that. Now, Parker did have in his example, he does have a check to make sure that, hey, if it already exists, don't insert again, but just be really careful. In general, I don't recommend folks doing this approach, but technically it's possible. So check it out, use your best judgment, and be again, be very careful with the statements that you're issuing. If you decide to go down this road, it is an option for you, but generally most organizations aren't doing this. Now, I gotta say, I think the guys in a cube are wonderful people, but they got this dead wrong. This is actually the way that we're going to start seeing information and data showing up in operational applications, and applications in line with what people use and interact with on a daily basis. See right now, to get access to some of that data, you have to exit the application you're in and then run a report or run some sort of analytics out of context, get that piece of information, and then come back to the app that you are working in. This is really inefficient. Once it takes you away from the app that you're working in, or if you have to copy that data back over, then it becomes a waste of time for you and potentially loses some of the benefit that you have of having that data in the app to begin with. So, not to pick on the guys in the cube, I think they're wonderful guys, but I do think this is sort of, sort of the future. I'll leave you with one more what about the reverse ETL process that I encountered about 10 years ago when I was working as an analyst. I had this really, I'd say mind-blowing idea at the time that the data warehouse was mutable, that it could change that you could write a data to it, that it wasn't the set in stone once a month process. And I remember bringing it to the CIO of the company that I worked at at the time and they shot down my idea. And part of that idea was to integrate data into our data warehouse on a daily basis and be able to overwrite data that was in there incorrectly, be able to store notes, take that data out of the data warehouse on a frequency and move it into other applications. I won't say it was a forerunner to reverse ETL, but in essence, it made the data warehouse an application instead of being just a place that you went to to pull data. Now, my idea was shot down, but I went to go work for another company, 
and they believed in this idea so much that they let it let me spin it up and um and the rest is sort of history i got promoted and, and became the cio myself and now that's the role that i feel today so i'm passionate about this particular technology i think that whenever there is resistance to it uh, when people say well i'm not entirely sure how this is going to work and it, it's very cutting edge and and the process and the idea is a little bit new that actually that perks my ears up a little bit and makes me want to pay attention to what's going on uh, with that particular tool or in this case um, I think it's a, a new industry that's starting so that's the what behind the reverse ETL piece just to whet your appetite now let's talk a little bit about the why <music> 